Hey songwriters, welcome back to the Songwriting Studio and in today's video I'm getting into the first of your GarageBand projects. A couple weeks ago I asked to hear your GarageBand projects because I wanted to spend some time in your songs producing your GarageBand songs and showing you the behind the scenes of that process. So the first song we're gonna do is from a subscriber named JC Almonte. He has a really, really cool song, so shout out to you, JC, and let's dive in and show you the behind the scenes of what it sounded like before and what I did and then what it sounded like after. All right, all right, all right. So let's give it a listen and I think you're really gonna like it. This is so cool. So here's a verse and chorus section and this is what I'm gonna be working on. So let's have a little Preview listen. Really well done. Then leading into the chorus now. Good job, JC. This is cool. This is cool. I'm excited to work on this song. All right, so I'm going to take a verse section and a chorus section. There's obviously a lot more to this song. So I'm just going to show you what I hear from my ear and some things that I would add into it and some things I would change as I hear them, okay? So here's what we're going to do first. When I hear this piano here in the verse, I feel like it could be a bit more like ambient and spacey. So what I'm gonna do is create a new track and I have created a preset called the ambient piano and I have a video on this of how I created this ambient piano. You can look at that in the description below. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piano line and just drag it down into the ambient track Give that a whirl. Ooh. And then even with this top piano, I feel like <clears throat> I want to do the same thing or something similar. I want to give it more space because to me, it just feels like it's a little bit too present. It needs to be like a little more ambient, a little bit, a little bit more spacey. That's what I'm hearing in my ear. So I'm gonna take this lead line and put it into the ambient as well. So, and I might even pan this lead line over just a little bit. Just so it doesn't fight with the lead vocal in the, in the middle quite as much. All right, so next I wanna get... So let's turn that monitor off and get to work. With this lead vocal, I think he has done a fantastic job. And so I just wanna clean it up a little bit. I think he, he picked a really great preset. It actually works really well with his voice, works really well with the vibe of this song. And so what I wanna do is just kind of refine that a little bit. And the first thing I wanna do is just the volume change. So when I listen to it, I feel like the volume could go up just a little bit. <laughs> So just a little bit, you don't want your vocals to sit way out on their own, but you don't want them to be buried down in the mix. So I'm just turning the vo lead vocal up just a smidge. All right, and so next, I wanted to add a little bit of echo to his lead voice. I'm just gonna use the master echo here inside of GarageBand. Just to help kind of fill those little spaces right there. And if I had more time, I think I'd work on cleaning that up a little bit, but I like the overall effect, so I'm gonna go with it. And then beyond that, 
I feel like the compressor is not actually firing. So what a compressor does is it kind of evens out your performance, makes your too louds quieter, your too quiets a little louder. And so the settings are right on here other than the compressor threshold, which is basically where it turns on. And so right now it's not even really turning on. You can see right here, it's not even, like a four to one ratio is good and, and the attack and the gain is good, but if it never comes on, then it doesn't do you any good, right? So I'm just gonna pull it down until we're getting maybe three to five or two to three dBs of gain reduction. dB stands for decibel and each one of these dots represent a decibel. So let me try that. Hey, So that's just gonna even out his performance a little bit, make it feel a little bit more present. And I might even boost the volume just a hair. So you can hear some of his syllables just a little bit more. So that's the compressor and let's move on. All right, next would be some tuning on his vocal and I he's done a really good job singing singing it's not because he is out of tune but no one's a perfect singer and not, I'm not going to attempt to make him a perfect perfectly tuned singer but I do think it's helpful to put a little bit of tunage and a little bit of polish and sheen on it so I'm going to hit E go to track and I'm going to pull up the pitch correction to mm, 70s or 80s I'm just going to have to test it out so let's try it so it's just grabbing a few of those notes that are just a little bit flat or sharp and kind of pushing them back where they need to be. And again, he's done a great job singing. This is really fun to work with, but I think it just helps give it a little bit more uh, professional touch. All right, and then I keep playing around with the idea of putting more reverb on his vocal. So I'm just gonna take that master reverb and, and see how it sounds. <laughs> So this is a little hack that I use from time to time is actually using multiple reverbs and none of them are on super duper strong, but they each have a little bit of their own flavor and character and some will carry out a little bit longer and some will be a little bit more luscious. And so that combo can sound really nice. And right now he already has the silver verb um, reverb on in his preset, the classic vocal. And so I'm just adding a little bit of reverb down here. It's very subtle, but it just helps kind of fill out the space. So we'll leave it at that. So that's it for mix sauce on the vocals. I think they're sounding really, really good. And we're gonna move on down and there's this gnarly trance pluck. That's probably my favorite name of an instrument ever. And uh, it's really cool. It sounds like this soloed. Yeah, I love that sound. I think it's really cool. I think it works with the vibe of this song. I just would like to see it moved out of the way and maybe even like moving panning wise. So what I'm gonna do is use automation by hitting A on my typing keyboard. And then I can click here in the drop down menu and select pan. And then I'll start just adding notes along the timeline Yeah. So we will start it over here. Then it moves over there. Then it goes over here. Then it moves over there. All right, so that should create a sweeping motion. So gnarly, bro. All right, so in context, that sounds like... <laughs> All right, so whether you like it or not, you get the idea. I think I would at least pan it one way and have it sitting over to one side as opposed to being straight up the middle. But I do like how it's it's going back and forth. And if I had more time, I'd probably 
like steepen up these curves so it's not in the middle as long, but it's more like over here and then it kind of swings and is over here and then it swings and it's back over there, that kind of deal. But let's move on. All right, so next, I feel like I want to build up some of the snares and claps that are happening. Like that, that clap just feels a little bare to me. Like it's in the right spot and it sounds good. It just needs to be layered up so that it sounds like more full and kind of fit, fits and fills out the space better. So what I'm gonna do is actually just go hunting for some loops. And I'll start by just typing in snare and kind of just listen, maybe. Uh. All right, so that's a really hard snare and I'm gonna pull it in and just grab the first little bit <clears throat> from this snare. So, I mean, this would be called sampling or just layering where we're taking kind of multiple snares and making them into one big snare. So let's see, it goes right here. So obviously it's super harsh right now. So I'm hitting B to go into the smart controls window. And what I need to do is add a lot of reverb. So I'm gonna choose the reverb platinum verb. And uh, what I'm gonna do is bring down the dry. That would be just the normal signal and bring up the wet. I'm also gonna crank up the reverb time a little bit. See how that's so I need like a long tail. I want a long luscious luscious tail on there. Okay, so again, I feel like I want more, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of reverb here as well. All right, so it's still real intense. I'm gonna turn it down in a minute, but I also wanna go into EQ. It's too in your face. And so one of the ways, little tricks that I use in EQ to kind of make something feel ambient and distant is to do what's called a low pass filter, which lets your lows filter through while cutting off some of your highs. And it just gives it an ambient sound. It's just kind of a smoother, cleaner hit. And so I'm going to take that down. It's way too loud. Bring it back up. Yeah, yes, okay. So it's just not feeling as, as bare. And then what I need to do is to get rid of so many things on my screen. And then I need to copy this and just put it where all the snare hits are, which is on the first, on the first, or beat two. So copy paste. All right, and now I wanna layer up that clap as well. So I'm gonna do the same thing, come in here, search for clap. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So hear how that was just a clap. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. But I don't wanna do all this over again. I want a similar sound, so I'm gonna hit Command D to duplicate that, and then I'm gonna drag clap beat. Yeah, clap beat number three down in here. And do a little shaving again to where I just have that clap. Come on. All right, and then we need to simply do the copy paste method. End of paste, end of paste. So that's all I'm gonna do with the verse. I'm gonna move into this chorus part. Let's see what we can do. So number one, we simply need to carry over these claps and beats. But I think what I want to do on this to make it more dynamic is, man, it's never going to go away, is to actually layer up the stomps and claps together. So like you saw, so that they all hit at the same time. And that's gonna require me doing that here as well on his uh, after party electronic drum kit. So let me, 
I'm gonna think about how to do this right here. Let me think about it. But maybe I need to turn them down a little bit because they hit harder now. So we're getting pretty producery right now. This is a lot of sound shaping, but he's done a great job with the song. So I'm just really getting detailed and trying to clean up the sound and, and really make it something nice and purdy and uh, polished. All right, so next I'm feeling like, dude, we need background vocal city right here. And so I'm gonna jump on the mic and sing along with him, sing some harmonies and see, see what we can uh, come up with. And then I'll swing them out the wide. Right. And of course, I'll copy and paste these over to here. And now we have a much more layered vocal. So if I mute, uh, mute the extras, it sounds like. Versus if I put these back in, we have. And with those, it's like you want them to be heard, but I don't want you to really hear my voice so much. I want you to hear JC's voice. So I'm keeping mine very kind of buried back in the mix. But I think that's a huge improvement. And it's just simple vocal layering. Like your lead line, make a double of that, make a triple of that. And with the two extras, swing them out a little bit, add more reverb. And then if you can harmonize or if you have someone who can harmonize, Throw in some harmonies, pull those harmonies back, swing those out as well, and it can sound really, really cool. All right, so I've got this idea. Uh, number one, what if we had a shaker in there? So I'm going to uh, create a drum track, and sometimes I'll create a drummer track not to use their actual performance, but literally just to grab their tambourine or their shaker and just use that since it'll be perfectly timed and such. So I will move that over to here. So I like that, but again, I want more space. It's a little, sounds like I'm standing in a room by myself. And so I'm going to want that, that distance in there too. This is shaping up really nice. It sounds sounding really cool. All right, and then I got one more crazy move up my sleeve, I feel like. I, I'm hearing like this thumping arpeggiated bass. I have a video on it. You can link it in the description or I'll link it in the description. You can go look at the link. I can't talk today. And so what I'm gonna do is create a bass track. <clears throat> Um, go to synthesizer bass agile synth bass turn it on and then we've got all right so i'm gonna at least give it a go it's really loud right now but that's okay i just want to be able to hear it so hit record <laughs> quantize action on it and then I can copy and paste that over here since this section is the same and then I'm gonna pull back the fader to make sure it sits right in the mix all right and then one last thing in this chorus this isn't an addition this will actually be a subtraction which is part of what you do as a producer and that is, there's this gnarly trance pluck is still going in the chorus, playing that little line. And I think it fits with the verse. And I even think it fits with the chorus, but it's almost like there's a lot of sounds happening. And so it kind of... 
I just want to try it without it and see if what and see if if uh, if it sounds any different without it. So let's. I don't know why I'm shaving it because I don't want it to do that. What are you doing, buddy? Okay, there's a glitch in the matrix. I don't even know like what in the world is going on here. So I don't know. It's really, it's kind of user taste at that point. But I, to me, it seems like the kick and the snare stand out more and the vocals stand out more. But I don't know, it does kind of harmonize with the lead vocals a little bit. So it's kind of either way. Let's listen back a little bit, get some context. Okay, I do like it without it, but it, it, it does miss something once you get into the chorus. So new idea here, people. So let's create another track, not the gnarly trance pluck. Let's go with a little synthesizer maybe all right beautiful melody is cool all right it's just cool i like to use it and i had this idea of like a so let's record this track. Okay, okay, so let's do our little trick on it. Let's balance it in the mix and see if that would be a nice addition. Go back, get a little context. So let's do a little before and after listen from here at the start of the verse to the end of the chorus. Thank you, JC, for this song. It's really cool, and I had a blast in it. So that's it for today's video, and be sure to check out my free five-part mini course called GarageBand 101, where you can learn how to use GarageBand to make your own music in less than 30 minutes. So I will catch you all in the next video. Peace out.